going to discuss the mysterious cloning case of copycat who has a varied coat color than its nuclear donor named Rainbow Achille Coquette. The Operation Copycat was just a branch of much bigger project to make pet cloning possible. This project was purely a private venture that was initiated by few millionaires at the start of this millennia to achieve longevity or immortality for their pets. If you ask a genius guy, what will he demand if a genie grant him or her three wishes? He might respond like this. First money. Next wisdom to do something worthwhile with all that cash. And finally the longevity or sufficient time to, pers to, to pursue a project that ensures its legacy. We all wish something like that, especially the longevity. The desire to live longer has motivated some millionaires to hire scientists to perform research in the field of animal cloning, IVF or stem cell technology. The story begins in 1997 with the cloning story of Dolly the sheep that inspired an 81 years old Arizona financer John Sperling who wanted to be able to replace or clone his husky border collie mix dog named Missy. In 1998, a multi-million dollar private project was launched to clone Missy at Texas A&M University College Station through a new company called Genetic Saving and Clone. The project is commonly known as Missiplicity Project. However, the world was yet to wait for another decade before witnessing dog cloning as a success. While dog cloning was yet a long way due to some unique challenges in the productive processes of canid animals to which dogs belong to compared to most of the other mammals, Operation Copycat was launched by Mark Wisthosen and colleagues at Texas A&M University College Station as a branch of Missiplicity project that concentrated on cloning cats. After realizing that cloning a dog genome is much harder compared to cat genome and hoping to get a better understanding of the cloning process itself. The team reported their first success in 2002 in their 21st February issue of Nature Journal, claiming that cloning is as efficient or inefficient as cloning a sheep, a cow, a mice, a goat or a pig. This Thorson's team first attempted to use skin fibroblast cells inserting their nuclei into an enucleated cat egg cell. Although 82 embryos were implanted in seven surrogate mothers, only one pregnancy reported. An unfortunately poor fetus died and the experiment remained unsuccessful. In their next attempt, scientists used nuclei from cumulus cells surrounding OVA Kiriko research cat named Rainbow. This time, five embryos were implanted in a surrogate mother, three of them were from cumulus cells and two from oral mucosa cells. Only one embryo made it to term and this was from cumulus cells. This put a success rate into one out of 87. Born by caesarean section on 22nd December 2001, Copycat was a normal looking feline but it was not an exact copy of its calico progenitor due to coat markings that were the outcome of a random event during development, which apparently seems impossible to change or copy through the current cloning scheme. However, this random event happens almost all the time routinely in all the vertebrates, flies and some plants through which nature tends to balance gene dosage in both the sexes of this class. For example, in mammals, male carries single X chromosome while female carries two X chromosome. The gene expression from both of these X chromosomes will double the gene dosage in, in mammalian females. 
which may result in unwanted phenotype. In order to balance the gene dosage for a particular gene located on X chromosome, one of the X chromosome is epigenetically silenced or lionized for whole of the future life in all the female somatic cells. This silencing does not involve any change in the manipulation of the genetic material that is DNA. That means the DNA in all these cells but at all times by all means remain 100% the same. Yet one of the X chromosome is speaking in one cell while its exact copy has been turned silent in a neighboring tissue cell in the same individual. Which X chromosome is going to be silenced? It is a purely a random or chance event. Is that information written somewhere in genome? Are there some selection mechanisms or preferences to silent the X chromosome? Let's put that debate for another time for another future video. This X inactivation has led to the variation in coat color in copy tape. Did you realize that cloning does not mean duplication? That means you cannot have two exact copies of you or beloved siblings or pets or partners. And after all, normal development is more of an exception than a rule. In cats, number of genes are involved in coat color determination, including color print locus C, agouti locus A, orange locus O, and locus E, as well as white dominance locus, white dominant locus W, and others. Most of these genes are autosomal in nature, except color, except color locus orange, which is located on X chromosome. The calico pattern results from an interaction between a sex-linked color locus O and an autosomal white spotting locus W. Color locus O carry two alleles O and B for orange and black. In heterozygote, the X inactivation results in the selection of melanocytes that express either one or the other allele. Where an X chromosome bearing O is inactivated, the melanocytes are black and where B is inactivated, the melanocytes are orange. The melanocytes migrate to the epidermis where they multiply and they are visible as a differentially colored patches. The effect of white spotting locus is to slow the migration of melanocytes. The white fur patches results when melanocytes fail to reach the epidermis slower the migration, the more extensive are the white fur patches. The combination of these two alleles, the combination of expression of these two alleles produces a gradient of coat color between a bicolored tartar shell to a tricolored calico. fertilization and during early embryonic development when embryo consists of only few cells the paternal X chromosome is selectively silenced in all the cells. This inactivation of paternal X chromosome or XP in all embryonic cell is the consequence of another epigenetic phenomena called imprinting. Later on during blastocyst the inner cell mass cells are eventually the cells 
that gives definitive structure to the fetus. So briefly, there are two active X chromosomes in female embryos. Afterwards, either paternal X chromosome or maternal X chromosome is chosen at random for silencing. How 1X is chosen for inactivation is a fascinating example of epigenetic regulation of gene expression. that is chosen for silencing remains silent throughout all subsequent cell generations. This is one of the most stable form of gene silencing that we know today. And all attempts to reverse it experimentally have been consistently unsuccessful. In case of Calico Cat, the patches of orange or black are the consequence of this X inactivation. In case of males, there are only one of the two possibilities concerning X-linked color locus, that is orange with white patches or black with white patches. But can you imagine an abnormal karyotype in male that would allow a male cat to be calico? Think for a moment and post your response in the comment section below. that cloning of calico cat did not result in an identical copy. The genetic saving and clone company told their customer that cloning will not resurrect their pets and company clearly turned away some customers that were interested in getting the same identical animals. Before we finish, don't you want to know the final fate of Missy Crescity project? Or what happened to the Missy the dog? Missy died in 2002, in fact euthanized because of an inoperable growth that happened in its esophagus before her cloning efforts were successful. However, her DNA was gene bank for future cloning efforts. In 2005, Dr. Hong and his team in South Korea successfully cloned the world's first dog, which they named Snuppy. Its somatic cell donor Thai was a male Afghan hound. Briefly, both Snuppy and Thai were healthy before both developed cancer and both died of it at the age of 10 and 20 years. Snuppy was one of the four clones that were born at normal weight, but one of the clones died four days after birth because of severe diarrhea whose cause were never confirmed. Remaining three clones had varied lifespan, Snuppy among the oldest who died at the age of 10. The phenotype of remaining three uh, clones is visible in this picture. Apparently they look the same. But the marks at their power look different. This again highlights the significance of epigenetic regulation in cloning. There has been a debate since from the beginning of cloning as whether clones would have a normal health, growth, reproduction and longevity. The answer to these questions might not be simple. 
but for sure epigenetic is playing a major role in shaping up the final fate of the organisms. With this note, I would say you goodbye. For more interesting videos on epigenetics and health, please keep on watching and please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.